Hello. Hi, Hello. Tom. <laughs> Welcome to our higher webinar today. Um, for anyone who is joining us, do drop a comment in. Let us know where in the world you are joining from. If you're in sunny London or maybe slightly further afield, um, I am in southwest London, which is actually really nice today. Uh, where are you based on? Uh, I'm in our office in Farringdon at the moment. Oh, nice. Oh, I love Farringdon. Always the best coffee shops around there. Yeah, very good lunch options. Not too bad. Oh, well, while we wait for people to join, I'll do a little bit of, a, of an intro to myself and hire for anyone who might be new to us. Um, so you're very, very welcome to our webinar today. Like I said, do drop us a little comment in the chat box. Let us know where you're dialing in from. Um, so I'm Kelly McGrath-Smith. I'm the community director here at Hire. Um, and for those of you who might be new, so Hire is a free to join global community of internal talent acquisition and HR folk. We've got over 10,000 members at the moment, which is really, really exciting. Um, and we tend to have the community living on Slack. So if you are working in internal TA or HR and you're not already a member, do come and join us. You can go to hirehq.com. And in essence, Hire is what we like to call the hive mind of global TA. So really united on a mission to level up the industry. And as part of that mission, we bring you these amazing weekly webinars here on LinkedIn Live, um, which is very exciting. I think this is our fourth one, um, fourth or fifth. And today I'm joined by Don Fogarty, who will be leading us through why you should be obsessed with community hiring, which is really, really apt for, for the group that we have here. Um, but Don, do you want to give us a little bit of an intro to yourself? Absolutely, yes. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so I'm Don. Uh, I am officially a, a talent lead at Atio. Um, I'm the only the talent person here. Um, but today, very excited to uh, spend the next probably 15 minutes or so talking about community hiring, um, because I think there should be a lot more discussion about how important it is, um, especially when you're hiring great teams and um, yeah, have plenty of time afterwards to to, to talk about it um, and yeah show you any of the sort of communities I'm particularly excited about as well. Amazing oh very exciting well like Don said we will have time at the end um, for sure for Q&A and we always love to have these sessions as interactive as possible so that you folks who are joining live get to you know ask any questions that might be at the top of your mind as we're going through um, the webinar but feel free you know you can absolutely drop a comment as we go as well um, if anything crops up that Don mentions that you want to drop a little note about please do um, and like we said at the end we will have plenty of time for Q&A. So it's always good maybe jot down some notes um, as we're going through if there's anything that you want to ask at the end. Um, well, I will hand over to you now, Don. Um, what I'll do is I will still be here um, to help anyone in the comments and for background support, but I will just turn off my camera just so um, we can completely focus on your presentation, Don, and then I will hop back on for the Q&A. Thank you very much. So I think this session is particularly helpful for uh, in-house recruiters um, in a role where they're spending a lot of time providing hiring managers and their teams with relevant and active candidates. Um, but the principles remain the same for, for any sort of talent-based role, I think. Um, for me, um, the community hiring approach is uh, born out of uh, some frustrations when it comes to sort of hiring inefficiency um, and you know my background is mainly in actually helping startups build early stage teams um, so that often means sort of starting from scratch um, and so over the years I've sort of tried to refine a process um, and looking ahead uh, I, I can see that technology is going to keep helping to to remove the administrative side of the work we do as recruiters, but uh, we'll probably be able to spend more time with people as a result. So making sure it's the right people and that there's a reward for that time spent um, is really important. And I'm particularly confident that you know finding people through communities, building your own communities, 
um, ultimately has a compounding effect on on making it much easier to access talent as you um, as you grow and, and your company grows. So firstly, today, I thought I'd talk uh, a bit more about those frustrations. Um, and um, this is what I've you know, found out whilst um, identifying and, and engaging with talent in the past. So for me, sourcing is uh, quite exciting, but it can be quite complex and a long process. Um, so to bring you know, candidates into that uh, hiring process, um, you might be mapping a market uh, completely. You're probably building a long list and you're you know, targeting people with some messaging, um, hoping that you, you know, build some relationships, bring some people into the interview process, um, and, and, and that leads to a great outcome. So a lot of work is done there, obviously discovering and, and learning. Um, when it comes to applicants, um, obviously the current market, they're relatively uh, plentiful, which is which is great. Um, but the efficiency frustration here is providing everyone with a really positive experience um, whilst making sure you actually spend your time on the most relevant people. And then referrals um, have always been incredibly effective. Um, but they seem to always require quite a lot of incentive, um, perhaps you know time spent awareness building, um, and there's there isn't a sort of a reliable um, system uh, necessarily. Um, so you know, combined, you know whether it's sourcing applications or referrals, I think that almost ninety percent of the time that that we can spend as as talent people and, and recruiters um, is actually not directly made directly related to the to the hire we want to make um, and that's what I'm trying to I guess fix partly through through community hiring to bring it to life um, demonstrate some of the benefits um, I thought I'd sort of go through an approach um, we took about you know changing things at, at Atio so one of my first tasks here was to to hire an engineer and um, you know, I searched high and low for lots of profiles uh, and we did end up making a hire we were very happy with. Uh, I produced a report on that um, because I found it interesting and as the first person who'd been responsible for hiring internally at Atio, it was interesting for, for our CEO as well. Um, and what I realized was that by looking at about a thousand profiles uh, and deciding that you know 800 of those were actually not quite right, but 200 were, you know, good people for us to reach out to. Um, you know, that's a lot of time spent on people who we didn't bring into our process. Um, so we did bring about 30 people in um, and we did hire one. But, you know, we're talking, you know, less than 5% uh, of my time was actually spent looking at the right people. So. When the next challenge came along and actually we needed to hire six engineers, uh, we focused on finding communities, particularly of developers um, and you know, people that we felt as though we wanted to work with were part of that community. Um, so we completely ignored, I guess, um, their availability, um, you know, their, their sort of out any known interest in them wanting to find a new role. We just wanted to look at the right profiles. And by doing this, um, we found eight different communities, um, looked at about 240 people, um, and actually received a, a really high response rate from those. Um, I think it was about 50%. Um, and so this had a big effect on, on the sort of efficiency of my time. So this time I worked out that about 30% of my time was actually spent on the right people. Um, so, you know, getting close to like you know reaching 10 times as, as efficient um and i learned a lot more by spending more time with the right people so hopefully that example um has given you some confidence in in why it's good to start sourcing and, and looking directly at communities um as opposed to doing a much broader wider search um where, wherever you you normally do or would go My particular recommendation um, is to use the time um, at the start of your next search by 
yeah, going after those communities and tools, um, especially um, those that feel sort of relevant to your hiring goals or company values. Um, the places that uh, I tend to frequent will be uh, lots of newsletters. Um, so I might sign up for every newsletter I can find on design engineering because we want to hire a design engineer and we haven't done it before. Um, then I will slowly realize which ones are producing good content, which ones are building community and who's part of those um, and hopefully turn it into some relationships. Twitter for me has a really strong sense of community um, and uh, it's just an example of you know a, a social network um, that you could use um, to basically connect with good people and um, they will lead to other good people. Um, and yeah, like anything, uh, LinkedIn included, you can build lists, you can you know, use advanced search and you can particularly find you know groups of, of people on there. Um, Palette is a tool I really love. Um, they help communities themselves. Um, so if you're a community owner, you'll use Palette to help you manage your members and promote jobs to them. Um, so there are lots of companies emerging in this space. Um, and ultimately, they're helping community leaders monetize their community. So there's great opportunities for us as recruiters to attract talent um, through tools like Palette. Read CV um, is a is a new kind of social platform. Um, it's it's sort of somewhere between a sort of LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, it's become very popular with designers. Great people hang out there, um, and you know you can post. A job post there which um you know gets a lot of exposure um so yeah again if the community is right it kind of doesn't matter how but um i think it's a worthwhile investment um to to spend some some money or, or some time on it um and as i mentioned earlier after the presentation very happy to sort of dive into some of the communities um directly and show you kind of what, what they look like So beyond um, you know showing how you know, time can be spent when when finding and, and engaging the the right talent through communities, um, I think building your own is the is the next best thing and the, and the next step um, because that's where it really starts to have a, a compounding effect um, to to build towards a future where you can actually hire from your own community. And so. If we just briefly revisit the the case study, obviously managed to spend 30% of, of our time on, on the right people, um, which was about um, 120 actual people in the end. And, and we hired six of those. Um, so I now have 114 people um, who we're really confident could do a great job for Atio, um, some of whom went through the hiring process um, and, you know, either failed for technical reasons or other reasons and uh, there's no reason why none of them wouldn't necessarily be right for us in the future um, so obviously not all 114 will be but I think we're still in touch with maybe 30 people um, and this really rewards the initial time I spent you know discovering them and allows for the timing to be right in the future. So I'd say that if you can put in place uh, some process uh, to stay in touch with people and you're in a position to share relevant and helpful content or invite them to events, then you're likely to see a few things happening. I think they could you know, obviously stay interested in your company and stay aware of the future opportunities. There's a chance they'll keep building their understanding of your business, perhaps become more attracted to it. Um, they're probably more likely to talk about you and, and your business amongst their communities. And you know, there's a chance that they will introduce you to people um, or, or talk about uh, your company um, to others that leads to you um, making a hire. So that's kind of what I mean by the, the comp compounding effect. Um, and I, it means I haven't lost the time I spent finding all those people in the first place um, and hopefully it means that one day in the future I have a really quick win and don't have to do more discovery work or, or find new people. Um, 
So I hope those examples uh, and the descriptions help, you know, with any sort of recruitment work to to increase efficiency and, and start thinking about building community. Um, but there are some things that I find particularly uh, interesting and it's very hard to associate them with data, but um, this is how I think we can sort of truly differentiate ourselves if, if you do uh, really invest in the community approach. Um, so one of the things is about values and attributes that community members have. And in my view, if somebody is part of a community, um, it could very well be the, the higher community that are, are hosting us today. Um, but they're more likely to be a curious person, someone who wants to develop their career, someone who uh, is aware of their peers' challenges, um, can keep up to date with latest trends or tools. Um, and all of that together is really valuable inside a company. So if you're hiring someone who's an active member of a community, it's likely that they will bring some really great um, values and attributes uh, with them. Um, rejections is another area um, which um, obviously enjoy is the wrong word, but uh, it can really be turned into, into positive work. Um, so it's very demanding, obviously, uh, but I believe that uh, if you can connect uh, rejected candidates with appropriate communities, then you're pointing everyone in the right direction. Um, and it really helps to yeah, turn that sort of demanding negative experience into a positive one. I personally have different recommendations for uh, roles and departments and, and stages of rejection. Um, and I find that this uh, results in lots of thank yous. Um, and I believe that one day, you know, someone we rejected will come back to us because of that experience um, or they'll recommend us. The um, network effect um, is sort of, yeah, unmeasurable in the most part. But um, yeah, I do think that for, for an hour a week um, to send out some rejections that are mainly templated, but, um, you know, helpful for others will, will result in, in future time savings. Um, finally, and this is way, way too ambitious, but um, as recruiters, uh, you know, we spend most of the money on behalf of the company. Um, headcount is the biggest expense for most companies, um, but our efforts to find them are not almost always seen as a, a huge cost center. Um, and I, I honestly believe that one day we can pay for all of our hiring efforts through the value we create in building our own communities. Um, the best communities are extremely valuable and um, they're valuable not just for us, but, you know, the ecosystem around our business and the people within it. So, um, yeah, that's the sort of more, I guess, magical, futuristic side of it. But I really think um, that's all possible um, if we focus on community hiring. So, yes, thank you. Um, I, yeah, I, I, as I say, I think you should be obsessed with it. I hope, um, yeah, I can show you more either today or happy to connect uh, outside of this. And um, yeah, if there's any questions, we'd love to to take them or, or show people around some of the communities I, I look at. Amazing. Thanks so much for that, Don. And yeah, any questions, pop them um, in the chat. I really liked what you were saying, particularly kind of towards the end around that rejection element, because you know, if you look at it from like a candidate experience perspective, just because a candidate's rejected, especially in a market right now where people are rejecting amazing candidates because we're in such a talent rich market for certain roles that it's so important to have that nurturing strategy in place. Because like you said, you may either hire that candidate in the future or looking at it from from a word of mouth perspective. Um, I'm really curious in terms of you mentioned you have kind of different, I guess, levels when it comes to rejections and and kind of the communities that you point them in the direction of. Um, maybe you can maybe share an example kind of 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 what you've done in that case and and kind of where the candidates have been redirected to community wise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I, do, I do do a lot of engineering hiring, so that's probably the the best use case. Um, for rejections uh, of applicants who 
um, at the very first application stage, we do not think um, have the sort of right experience for Atio. Um, I typically point them towards um, something called the pragmatic engineer um, because uh, a guy called Gurgly runs a community of like 400,000 people and he quite literally has a free ebook for anyone who's looking for a job or, you know, trying to get better at their job. Um, when we interview engineers, I will then um, push them into a couple of different communities. So uh, if we screen and it's not right, then I push them into something called Circular. Um, and Circular is kind of a bit of a free marketplace for, for talent and companies to interact. Um, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's got some paid options uh, to survive, but um, that's kind of where the people we screen out go. Um, and then um, I previously used Hired, um, and obviously I'm really enjoying using Palette. So mm -hmm. if we get into interview stages of candidates, and they've obviously you know invested into us, um, I'm confident in that we're you know screen we're interviewing great people so i push them towards you know the best communities i'm aware of um and that's normally hired and palette at the moment amazing that's really really interesting i've linked um the programmatic engineer as well just in case um anyone wants to take a look um we've got some questions in the chat so we've got one from mark saying he's curious to know if your communities are based around you as an individual or as your company atio yeah, it's quite um, an awkward one. If I've interpreted the question right, um, I am doing my best to um, make sure it's about Atio. Um, but obviously, these are people relationships. And so uh, I do often find that, you know, I have a very, I get quite close relationships with people who are not actually um, a member of our team and maybe never will be. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that regard, I'm kind of not using company resources in the best possible way. But equally, we don't quite never know, know what's happening in the future. I'm sure um, one day, you know, I would like to have the benefit of people knowing me because of Atio. So, yeah, um, I try and make it as much about Atio as possible um, and hopefully more so in the future. Nice. And then we've got one from Marco, um, which is really interesting, actually. It's what do you suggest in the context of picking the platform for your community? You know, a LinkedIn group, Slack group. And this is something I think that, you know, higher, for example, we're on Slack. That's where our community lives. But there is numerous other places. Um, so what would be your kind of suggestions? Yeah, I think... Um... So definitely when it comes to like engineers and product people and designers, um, they're really good at like having online communities outside of um, places like LinkedIn. Um, and that's where tools like Palette have been really helpful because they kind of bring them all together again. Um, there's another one called uh, TechTree. And yeah, I've been seen, seeing others that are basically hubs for community leaders. Um, I... I think that it's a it's a bit hard to work it out but there's um reddit as well if if you ever tried to get an answer on google that you can't get the answer for you probably get it on reddit um and there's the, there'll be a community for like i don't know you, you know flowers with six six leaves on them on reddit it's like so detailed in terms of what people connect with and, and their passions um but yeah linkedin groups is probably the the original place for lots of people and still very worthwhile as well um and i often actually start on linkedin i don't know maybe i can quickly share my screen for an example kelly um, yeah, you should. i can add it um to the stream so you can kind of talk us through okay um can you see that now it's a linkedin profile oh yes um so I was recently hiring a salesperson and I came across lots of candidates like this. Um, and they're like members of the members of these things actively mm -hmm. on LinkedIn now. So that's not a group or like a page like it used to be. Um, so then, and then you kind of go into this uh, community um, you realize there are like nine other people. So you can dig into that. Um, you see that it's part of, oh, it's powered by Wiser. So 
then you end up, you know, there's a sort of a recruitment element to it. But um, that's kind of where it all starts. And yeah, there's just, you just got to find the profiles and find the people that are talking about it to kind of dig into it, I think. Yeah, that's really interesting, because it is true that a lot of communities at the moment, uh, people will have it on their profile. We're the same with the higher community where, you know, a lot of our members do have higher on their profile in terms of being a community member. Um, it's also really interesting, I think, like we acquired Hire, um, which used to be DBR, so it was already in, in Slack. And one of the, I guess, considerations for communities is like, where do your ideal members tend to be anyway? And if you're looking at, you know, talent acquisition or HR folk, typically, you know, a lot of people do have Slack, if not MS Teams, but Slack is quite an accessible platform for people. Yep. Um, like you were saying earlier, like LinkedIn, again, there's a lot of easy, accessible ways to create groups, look for groups. Um, so it's like you said, kind of looking at where, where do those communities tend to tend to congregate naturally or what's kind of the easiest way to get them to sign up without it being, yes. you know, downloading something completely alien or something that will bombard them um, too much. I think back in the day, um, when hire was dbr early early days it was a whatsapp group so yeah. you know it's interesting how like as you evolve and how many members you have it will kind of dictate maybe where you need to host your community um but that was really interesting to kind of to to see you share your screen there as well um because i do think that's a really good hack for people to kind of see where people are members of um yeah. We've also got a question come through from Louise saying, do you run the communities or do you tend to involve marketing, engineers and other teams as well? Um, yeah, I run them and I find it really hard and really um, difficult to do it as as I'd like to. Um, so, yeah, I think that, um, you know, as as our business grows and as the talent team grows, um, we'll probably look to hire for somebody who's, genuinely a community builder rather than perhaps um, a talent sourcer. Um, and I think that there's obviously a lot of skill sets that align in those two kinds of people, but somebody who's built community rather than just, I guess, um, not just, but rather than specifically focused on sourcing talent, I think will be more appealing. Um, and there's a bit more kind of, yeah, marketing skill in that. Um, so yeah, definitely would like to involve more people and do a better job of, of staying in touch with everyone. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one with community and there's actually so, some communities out there about communities. So if you are yes. building a community, I think there's one um, called Community Club um, that I follow and it has lots of really interesting insights in terms of, you know, what sets the foundation for a community. There's also like really cool podcasts out there about communities as well. Um, I'll link some in the comments after um, the webinar as well of, of ones that I'd recommend because it, it is a really interesting field and there are like experts out there in community specific, you know, whether it's engineering or, you know, I don't know, movies, whatever, like that you can have a community for, for so many things, but there's an interesting science, I think, behind what has, what keeps a community engaged and how you get, you know, people to be your ambassadors and your champions within the community, which is why I think it's so powerful when it comes to talent acquisition and candidates. Um, and I loved what you were saying earlier in terms of, you know, you can share content with these folk, you know, it can be like newsletters or, or whatever, but actually you, you're just creating this, you know, pool of engaged people who hopefully, you know, will resonate with your brand, even if they're not looking for roles. And then when the time comes that, you know, they are a good fit potentially for a role, they will already have um, a lot of, positivity towards the companies and the brands that you work for as well um so yeah really really interesting um and marco has just commented a bit of a summary saying linkedin group is an okay option and then there are some other interesting platforms like stack share and reddit as well to explore yeah absolutely i think um another thing i'd love to do is you know almost try and create some you know journeys that that we go on obviously I briefly showed one with a salesperson there but sometimes it really is like find a link click a link click a link and then all of a sudden you realize that there's like a few people there and that they're the people that you are looking for um but yeah to say where they are is quite um difficult because um yeah 
they just sort of find their own way. I'm sure as someone who's growing community yourself, it's sort of, yeah, quite interesting to go and find them and yeah, bring them in. Yeah, exactly. I think that your your stats from your case study speaks for themselves, really, when you're looking at, you know, I think it was like 3.5 initially yes. moving to, was it, what did I write down, 30% of the time spent community yeah. hiring actually resulted in a hire. Like, that's a phenomenal result to actually be able to, to showcase there in black and white in terms of, you know, the time spent in those places and more time spent on very relevant candidates within the process as well. Um, I'm, I'm really curious in terms of when you when you put that together um, for potential hiring managers, like what was the reaction when you kind of showcased that that jump from 3.5 to 30 percent? Um, I think that is quite hard for them to understand the difference. Um, and it's even harder because when they want to hire someone, you're like, well, I'm just going to spend a couple of weeks like finding out where everyone hangs out. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's good to have that like data behind it and get there, get them to trust the process. Um, but I think, um, yeah, a, a lot still kind of see um see things a bit more traditionally so it will take time and I think in an ideal world maybe in a year's time you know they've managed to hire someone from a year ago who we met and stayed in touch with and then they really realized that oh actually that's why we did that so yeah yeah exactly it's a bit of a long-term game like you said hopefully in exactly. a year's time you can actually reflect because uh, it's not a quick win, you know, I think when you have communities and you're building these, you know, engaged communities, you're not going to hire someone probably like a month later. But actually, if you're yeah. looking long term and the payoff there, I think that would be really incredible. Maybe we'll get you back in a in a year's time <laughs> and you can give us an update of, of what it's been like. Yes, I'll just be, yeah, I'll just, people will just be walking in the door, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was really, really interesting. Um, before we wrap up, obviously, if, if anyone does have any um, more questions, do do pop them in the chat. Um, but that was really, really insightful. I think for everyone who's tuned in, we will also have this as a replay. So you can, of course, go back and rewatch. You can share it with anyone who you think um, really might engage with this as well. Maybe you're looking to build a community or you're looking to, you know, figure out how you can start using community when it comes to sourcing strategies, talent nurturing strategies. Um, you know, do, do feel free to watch back. Um, as I mentioned, if you are new to hire we are a global community of internal talent acquisition and HR folks so we've got over 10,000 members um, and growing which is great so we always have these LinkedIn uh, webinars free every Wednesday same time um, but within our private Slack group there's lots of really interesting conversations. We have various channels for specific topics. We've got some around sourcing, some really specific to DEIB. You know, we've got channels about early careers, lots and lots of people for you to connect with if you ever are feeling, you know, sometimes a bit alone in talent acquisition. Sometimes people are the only standalone person in TA and it's great to have a group to chat to or if you just want to figure out, you know, what's going on with a policy, if there is a better way to wear things. It's a very friendly and inclusive group. So please do join us. I've popped um, the, the link below for anyone who might want to hop over. Like I said, it is it is free and um, we would love to, to see you in there as well. And we've just got a comment from Mark saying, it's a great reminder to be engaged with communities. Thank you for the insight. And Marco, very insightful. Thank you, guys. Well, we're glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, Don, thank you so much again for your time, for putting all of that together and talking us through everything. Um, Next week, we will be back again with another webinar, this time in a slightly different format um, because we are having a panel discussion. So this one is all around leading TA for the first time. So in essence, driving the car while building it. Um, this was a highly requested topic from quite a, a lot of people within the community. Um, and we're joined by an expert panel who will share their insights, their challenges they face, the successes they faced, um, but also be on hand to answer any questions that you might have. So we've got Paddy Lambros, who is a talent director at Atomico. We've got Kevin Quaka, who's the director of talent acquisition at Grin. 
And then we've got Colette Zaro, who is the VP of People at Moxie and Power. And it will also be hosted by Hire's very own uh, Phil Blades. So that should be a really, really interesting panel. Um, so do come and join us. That will be at four o'clock UK time uh, next week, or it'll be 8 a.m. So nice and early uh, PST time as well. So hopefully see more of you there next week. Um, like I said, thanks so much, Don. That was really, really interesting. And um, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you later, everyone. Bye. Bye.